Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday. It's the 17th of May. Hope this finds you well. Uh, I had a pretty good week this week, uh, really hectic, a bit busy, uh, kind of a short week news-wise. So I've got just a couple things to bring to you this morning. Um, I was reading in the paper, uh, kind of following up from last week, about uh, this article. It's an op-ed article. Even Star Trek is now hitting the, the paper. It's called Put Aside Logic. It's an op-ed article by Maureen Dowd. I'm kind of talking about how newspapers and uh, media are suffering these days. You know, unfortunately, um, what's happening with uh, journalism and with our newspapers is that they're struggling to survive right now. You know, people are getting information from all sorts of different sources, not the least of which is their um, computer or the internet, the web, things like that. And it's making it more difficult. Of course, the economic downturn has made uh, advertising um, revenues uh, start to go down and uh, publishers are suffering. Um, you see that a lot in the States um, because so much of the revenue is driven from advertising for the, the newspapers. Um, and so Maureen Dowd is um, actually using some analogies with Star Trek to explain kind of what's happening. Um, here, just quickly, um, uh, it's, it's stating that um, David Simon, the creator of The Wire, who worked for 13 years as a Baltimore Sun, a reporter testified that high-end journalism is dying uh, and when that happens and no one is manning the cop shops and zoning boards America will enter a halcyon era for state and local uh, political corruption and I guess that's really the point for me is that you know newspapers and good reporting good journalism is essential to a healthy democracy and it means that we need to uh, ask certain questions and you know journalists well that's that's their job really um, to be hopefully impartial uh, reporters to be able to provide people um, if not the questions um, themselves hopefully some of the answers to some of the, the things that trouble society so well, I kind of segue um, from from that you know into kind of what brought me into um, wanting to learn more about new media what's going on in places like YouTube or Facebook because you know, here in Europe, I felt like I was missing out uh, a little bit on what was going on in the States with, um, <clears throat> let's say, popular culture. And, you know, I'm aware um, how important some of these um, uh, new media uh, platforms are. Um, it has to do with how people are getting their information, how they're sharing that information, how they're uh, interpreting it and, you know, adapting it into their own lives. So, um, you know, I thought it was really kind of cool uh, here when I opened up the paper, which is, I guess, old media now. And this picture caught my eye. Um, that's a picture of recovered paper, if you don't recognize it, the business that I'm in. And it's actually telling a story about this lady. It's titled, Socking It to the Society of Mass Consumption. It's about this lady and, and this environmental video that she produced. Her name is Annie Leonard. And she produced um, this video called The Story of Stuff. It was uh, produced in December of 2007. And actually it's uh, kind of a sleeper video that has caught on into uh, classrooms around the United States and increasingly around the world. Um, since being introduced on the web, the video has now had over 5 million uh, hits on the site. I think it's approaching 6 million according to this article. But it talks about um, the need to break, to break uh, this linear model of consumption um, that we're in and the way that you know, we consume the resources of the planet um, and what effects that has, not only throughout the process of consumption, um, but what happens to goods um, after they've been consumed and how that affects people, what role the government has in all of this and balancing the needs or the desires of corporations to generate more consumption. So it's a 21 minute video. Um, I went and looked at it. I found it very interesting. Um, and a really good counterbalance uh, to some of the stuff that, that we see and hear in, in mainstream media, funny enough. Um, so, um, you know, I guess that's the, the end sum of, of all of this is that you need a good blend of different media sources so that you get kind of your own picture or let's say a more complete picture for yourself. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's up to us as individuals to ask our own questions about our world, about what's happening uh, all around us and to to find those things that are important to not only to ourselves personally but important to all of us and to, to make differences each in our own lives and that 
um, by living in a more um, thoughtful way, um, by acting, you know, more by example, leading by example, um, that that we can can make a change, and we we can do things that are better for the long run um, for ourselves, our families, and ultimately the children that will inhabit the earth and the the future. So I guess this kind of ties in a lot of different things I've been thinking about. Um, do read that article. I think it's awfully interesting. I could go more and tell you about it, um, but if you would, just go to uh, www.storyofstuff.com and you can see more about it there. Um, also in the International Herald Tribune. Um, it's, it's reported, uh, let's see, this was on Tuesday, May the 12th. So I'm going to put a little uh, video compilation together and then i got to head out and uh, take care of some other stuff today. So I'll keep it short. Hope this finds you well, that you have a great week, and we'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, I wanted to take a quick walk through the garden, because I haven't done it yet um, in a while, and things are definitely growing. Um, the peonies are really doing great, and as well, you can see the puppies are starting to come up. Love these uh, little pink flowers here, aren't they? Isn't that gorgeous? And um, I don't know what you call that, lapis or something, but... It's been really enjoyable, those little bluebell type flowers. And then we come over to the California lavender. Um, I think I made a bad cut last year <laughs> and I kind of destroyed this left hand side you can see, but then maybe this is going to have to come out along with the um, renovation that goes, goes on later this year. Um, zooming over, there you can see the other peony plant and um, I think it's doing really really well. Looks super good. I need to do some uh, feeding here. Oh, yeah, Hortensia. See I am getting my names down correctly. And then the tree here. Look at the snow from the tree. Isn't that wonderful? Okay coming around on the path. Hostas are doing really well. Actually you know what this looks like? This looks like Parmesan cheese actually <laughs> instead of snow. So it's an Italian garden right now. There you go. Cool. Let's uh, meander around the corner. Ferns looking good. They've got a little bit more light and shade, so they're gonna they're gonna really do better. These were um, obfuscated by the the other trees um, that were kind of blocking the path, and I took those out. Hostas again. These are the cute little littler little ones, smaller ones. Uh, Japanese maple, really nice here. I'm glad that the weeds haven't really popped up yet. That's nice, you know, since I had it um, gardened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm gonna get to the gate. I think this right here is more like an American style magnolia. Now it's just started to blossom. And when this thing really sets off, it will just be an explosion of color. But you can already see um, how nice that is. Can't wait to see it. Here's the this uh, kind of Japanese. I don't know what you call it, but it was trimmed a bit short last year. Um, I was a bit sad about that, but it'll grow back. Um, kind of like getting getting a bad haircut. <laughs> you know, it'll grow back. No worries. So these will um, blossom later this year. What you see here below, I don't know the name for it, but it'll make these nice little yellow flowers uh, later this year. More close to the end uh, end part of the summer. Um, this is the site of my future Dumplebot. Um, that's um, a cold bath. Um, you know, um, when you have a sauna and a Japanese um, yeah, sauna or finish, usually you have a Dumplebot, which is just uh, a cold bath that you can jump into after you have your, your sauna. There you see the interior uh, courtyard. And just continuing on over uh, and down the path to the deck, um, more hostas, and then we are on the deck and coming into another part of the garden, the back, really the back part of the garden. I'll end it off with Big John, our lovely sequoia, whom I adore. That's it folks, hope you have a great uh, day and have enjoyed this little view of the garden.